Hi, my name is Chris, and today I want to talk to you about how you can use your scenes and live stream setup with different audio sources and similar things for conference calls. This is great, especially if you don't want to just stream your desktop, which many of the conference calling apps already support. But if you want to do professional streams in group calls, conference calls with Jitsi, Zoom, Skype, or whatever you want, then this tutorial is for you. Basically, what we're going to do is set up OBS, which is a live streaming software. And with a plugin, which is called OBS Virtual Cam, you can actually use the output from OBS then over in other programs. Now, there's one thing to note. Some applications may not allow you to use virtual cameras like this one. That is actually something that they have disabled and they can re-enable it. So if you are running into a program that you cannot use a virtual camera with, like for example, Skype right now, uh, Zoom is about to fix that as well. So that's going to work again on Mac OS and uh, other programs. If you are running into that situation, please contact the developers of those programs and let them know that you would like to use virtual cameras and that they may be able to re-enable that functionality or enable it uh, to begin with, because it is really an important part of being able to use OBS or Wirecast or other programs to do more high quality conference calls as well as streams and similar things. Now, more and more teachers, yoga trainers, and other fitness people are moving toward a online online learning situation and using something like OBS to switch between desktop, different camera angles, different audio sources and such things is really, really powerful. Now let's jump over to the screen so I can show you how you can set this up all with free software and you will find all the links to the downloads down in the description below. Now, of course, you will need OBS Studio, but you can just download it from the website obsproject.com, which is linked in the description below. And there you will find the installers for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So you can get those there and just follow the download and setup process, which is really simple. Now, going further, we will need a plugin for OBS. Now, what you can see on the screen right now is actually the Windows version. So this is what you would need if you are running Windows. I'm not going to show you how this works because I don't have a Windows environment here. So you can just download this, follow the instructions. Usually there are instructions, so please make sure to read the installation tutorial, and then you can get started from there. Now, I'm going to focus on the Mac version. The Mac version you will find on GitHub, and I will have the link in the description below. And as you can see here, you can just read through this. The installation instructions are super simple. Just download the official version of OBS, download the PKG installer from a release page, run it, and then make sure to restart OBS, restart the app that you want the camera to be used in, and then also start the virtual camera. And let's go through this. So you go to the release page on here, you can see there is a OBS Mac virtual cam and then version something. And this may be a different version in the future. So if you are getting to this place in a year from now, maybe this is probably going to be different. So please make sure to just get the newest version right at the top. So you just want to download this file into your downloads folder, run the PKG file, and then it's going to ask you if you want to move that file to the trash. I always do that so that it keeps my downloads folder nice and clean. Once you have gone through that, of course, you need to restart OBS. So I'm just going to close this and keep this open because it's actually a test project or like a test website where you can see and test this type of webcam. And I just closed OBS and now I'm going to start OBS again. And now we're just going to wait until the camera is there. So I have my FaceTime camera here from my Mac because I use my big camera for recording this video. So as you can see, I have this here. And now going to the menu here, there's actually a tools section. And under the tools section, there's a point that's called start virtual camera. And once I click that button and I just move this over, you can see in this site here, which is a WebRTC sample page where you can actually just test whether or not your virtual camera is working. If I reload this page, you can actually see that there are video sources and here's the OBS virtual camera. And if you have seen another video of mine where I talked about how to set up NDI on your phone to use in different ways, you can actually also use your phone here as an NDI video source, but that's a different story. While we are here, though, you could, in theory, also use the NDI settings in OBS. So go to NDI output settings, main output, preview output, click OK, 
And then we can go to NDI video, NDI virtual input. There, go to source, OBS, and then this works the same way. But back to the camera and the virtual camera device here. This is all working nice and well. Now, the question is how you do this in, for example, Zoom. In Zoom, it's pretty simple. It's the same thing. You restart Zoom. And once that is started, you can go to the preferences. And up in the preference, you have the video. And there, you can again choose between video, test, signal, or FaceTime, HD video, and OBS virtual cam. And to make sure that it's actually the virtual cam from OBS. We're just going to move this or resize it so that it is actually that camera and not just the FaceTime camera. The FaceTime camera, of course, stays the same and the OBS virtual camera now is moved around. And that's already everything you need to run this software to actually make all this work together. And it is actually quite powerful. You can now use, for example, desk sharing or screen sharing next to your camera, have yourself small in an area, or have two or three different cameras, like, for example, a GoPro, which I talked about in another video that I have on my channel, how you can use this with an RTMP server locally to also be a camera in your overall setup. Overall, OBS is a really powerful tool and I have a couple of videos on my channel. So if you're interested in those, please check them out. If this video was helpful for you, please leave it a like so other people can find it too. If you have questions or feedback, leave that in the comment section down below and I will either answer it right there or make a separate video about it. And with all of that said, I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.